In this video, we're going to have a look at the second step of the residential duct design process, the static pressure page. You can get to the static pressure page by going to the show menu, going to your right D or right duct tools, and selecting static pressure, by clicking the duct button on your navigator bar and selecting static pressure, or clicking the right D toolbar at the top of the page and clicking the blower icon here. Now once you're on the static pressure page, you should notice that the external static pressure has carried over from your equipment selection window. If you don't have information in the external static pressure window, go back to your equipment selection window and fill in both your CFM and static pressure from step one. With this information on this page, we can now isolate the amount of resistance to be used for our duct design. You see, ductwork won't be the only thing resisting airflow. And since we're designing the duct system to achieve a certain amount of total resistance on the fan, we need to remove those things which are going to add to that resistance that aren't ductwork. For example, your coil. Now you may or may not have a coil loss. For this example, I'm using an air handler, and many air handlers are rated with a coil in them. However, some of those coils are rated dry, meaning there'll be an additional adjustment factor for a wet coil and depending on the unit, that adjustment factor might be different. And this is something I need to look up in my manufacturer's technical data. Now, some air handlers are going to be rated with a wet coil already in them, meaning there wouldn't be any pressure drop at all. Now, if this were a furnace situation or an air handler with a, with a secondary coil or hot water coil, I would have additional pressure drop for that as well. There are no standard values for coil pressure drop. This is definitely something you're going to want to look up in the manufacturer's technical data. Just a cursory look through some of the technical data that we see pressure drops as low as a tenth of an inch all the way up to over five tenths of an inch of pressure drop depending on the amount of air flowing through a particular coil. Now for this example, I'm going to apply a wet coil adjustment of 0.07 inches of water column. Now my heat exchanger is something that typically in a furnace situation I wouldn't need to adjust for. Furnace heat exchangers are most likely going to be included in the static pressure ratings of your manufacturer, but it's always important to know what those assumptions are, so for final word on this, check your technical data. Air handlers, on the other hand, most likely don't include the static pressure loss from a strip heater, and depending on the size of that strip, strip heater and the amount of airflow you're moving through it, you'll have different pressure loss numbers here as well, and they can become significant at higher KW and higher airflow values. I'm going to use a pressure drop here of 0.05 inches of water column. Now supply diffuser and return grill pressure drops are something that you can look up as well. I'm going to use the manual D standard 0.03 pressure drop for both supply diffusers and return grills, leaving with a filter pressure drop. Now filter pressure drop can get very high and can make designing a proper duct system a very difficult task. Be sure to know what your actual filter pressure drop is on the amount of air moving through it. Some people would be surprised at the amount of resistance a one inch pleated filter could provide on their system. Now I'm going to use a very low reasonable pressure drop number on a high surface area filter of 0.1. This number can be much higher, but for the purposes of this design, I'll say I'm picking a very low restriction filter for this design. Um, I don't have a humidifier in this design, so I'll leave that out. And a balance damper, I will use again the manual D standard of 0.03, leaving me with a total available static pressure of 0.19 inches of static pressure. Now what this number means is I have 0.19 inches of resistance allowed for my ductwork. In other words, the worst case run of this duct system should create 0.19 inches of resistance overall on the fan, causing the right amount of airflow to come through said fan. This ultimately is what a friction rate is all about. After you've designed the duct system and WrightSoft has calculated not only the actual length of each duct run, but the additional equivalent length of each fitting your air is moving through, we will have a total effective length number. Based on that number, WrightSoft will be able to create and use a friction rate that creates an available static pressure, 0.19 inches, which in turn, after all of the other resistances, will create a total static pressure of 0.5 inches in this case. With an available static pressure of 0.19, a friction rate of 0.1 would be created if I had 190 feet of total effective length of run. Once our available static pressure is set, we're ready to move on to the next step of our duct design process. However, we will be back to our static pressure page to find out what the actual design friction rate of our system is 
and determine whether or not it's within the acceptable range. Thank you for your time, and have a good day.